Someone's help! Where did you get that gear from? RustPlus.com Helping you get the skins you want. This video is sponsored by RustPlus.com. Check out their link in the description below. Hey there, Snow here with a quick base build. There's not much to this one, but I wanted to bring you a temporary base idea because every time I upload a full white footprint, I get silly comments like, But Snow, that costs too much. How will I ever build this on a full pop on white day? So since some people don't understand the concept of a temporary loot base, I figured I'd hold your hands and walk you through the steps of setting one up. The reason I use roofs in here instead of the walls is because since this is a temp base, you want to put as few resources into it as possible. And by simply using the roof pieces, you are saving over 1500 stone and a few hundred wood that can be saved for your main build. Uh, it might not seem like much, but when battling an entire server for stone, 1500 can make or break you. All right, guys, so let's get on with the build. All right, so what you need to do is set up a little area between red towns, maybe near a road, just so you have somewhere for resources. Don't forget to you need to be near trees and stones. The whole point of this is to have essentially uh, a little loot farm base. So drop down three square floor pieces, one triangle and stone those up. Now you want to be moving as fast as possible because this is supposed to get you set up on white day. Uh, within a matter of two minutes so drop yourself a full wall here two half walls here a roof piece here a roof piece here a double door frame here 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 and a single door frame here add a triangle floor piece here half walls in these positions and go ahead and stone everything up now drop your front door on here and add a floor piece here Stone that up. All right, so you want to add your sleeping bag as far across to the left and as far forward as you can get it so you have room to fit your furnace. Go ahead and jump up on that furnace and add a triangle floor piece here. Stone that up. Now grab out a couple of boxes and place them in these positions. Go ahead and stone up the roof and now you're at least somewhat semi-secure. Heading back inside, we have to decide now, do we need a TC? How far, how long are we going to be using this base? If it's more than half an hour to an hour, then we probably do want to add a TC in. Uh, if it's only going to be uh, needed for the sake of about half an hour before decaying really sets in, or in even an hour, don't worry about the TC. But for our circumstances, we're just going to add in the TC here. Anyway. So now we've got a TC down, we can add a large box behind it. And we should be able to fit two small boxes in front. If you can't fit two in, that's fine. All right, so on this side, we can add two large boxes. And at the back here, we can add at least three boxes, if not four. Now, it might even be a good idea to add these small boxes in before you add these small boxes over here and the large box, just so you can get across as far as possible. Now at the top here, we want to add our large boxes. So on this side, we want to move that one as far over as possible. So it's poking out the edge. So if we go down and look at that, we can see that we can access it from underneath. We can go ahead and add in one more large box up here. So now that that's all added in, we can go ahead and add our wooden double doors into each of the, uh, the assigned spots. And now 
you have your little loot base. Now, it, when you die, you can actually still spawn up here with the uh, wooden door. Now, there is one caveat with uh, spawning up the top here is that you cannot actually access the code lock from down here. So having the sleeping bag up there is uh, sort of a bit of, mostly just a security measure. You are going to want to have a sleeping bag outside because if you do spawn up there, you aren't able to actually remove this double door. It is helpful if you have a garage door, that way you won't actually need to remove this double door. Now, due to the positioning of the, uh, the code lock, if you were to spawn up here, you wouldn't actually be able to get through. This is more of a sort of little safety thing, just in case you need to say, move resources from these boxes down into there or over there. Should somebody have actually get inside? It is suggested that you keep a sleeping bag. In fact, it's suggested you keep more than one sleeping bag on the outside. So if you go ahead and add a sleeping bag in the bushes over there and up on the hill and stuff like that, you still be able to get down, jump in here, start looting your stuff. That sleeping bag, again, is just a security measure just in case. So if you wanted to get out of there, you would have to spawn outside and, or even have a friend spawn outside, come take the, the door off. Again, it's not the greatest idea in the world, but uh, really, other than adding the sleeping bag here, which you certainly could do, uh, is more than helpful uh, for you to add one here. Obviously, if somebody gets into your little airlock here, they're not gonna let that sleeping bag slide. But um, yeah, it is helpful just to have an extra one here, just in case, obviously, you wanna be able to access your loot at all times. So that is the temporary little starter base. Uh, there's not much to it, again. Uh, it's not. If somebody wants to raid this, they're gonna raid it. Uh, that's as simple as that but this is not meant to last you beyond two or three hours on a on a wipe day it's just not meant to so yeah i'm tom snow thank you so much for watching this is a temp based starter little solo thing uh again not much to it uh it's a starter base. What are you going to do? My name's Tom Stowe. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, or uh, go ahead and share it with your friends, whatever you want to do. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Peace.